Hey guys, it's Fiona. I have a special guest here today. This is Hannah Biddle. Hi. Hannah used to be my assistant and she wrote a great article for Birdie Beauty on what it's like to be a celebrity makeup artist assistant. So I thought I would have her on and pick her brain a little bit so that she can share her experiences with you so that if you want to be an assistant to a makeup artist or specifically a celebrity makeup artist because it's kind of a unique situation, uh, she can give you some really excellent tips and advice and um, I'm really excited to hear everything she has to say. So, hi, Anna. Hi. Thanks for doing this. I, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, Thank it's you. hard getting our schedules together, but <laughs> sure we made is. it happen. Mm -hmm. Also, there's some tree trimming happening outside my house. Welcome to Metropolitan City Living. So we'll just have to bear with it. Okay, let's dig right into it. Um, let's talk about being an assistant. <clears throat> and uh, wait, you know what, first of all, I wanna talk about what prompted you to write that article for Birdie? Uh, well, where I am in my career, I'm, com I'm kind of almost at the end of assisting, if you will. I'm trying to transition out of being an assistant. Um, and I just kind of wanted to leave a legacy, if you will, or, you know, just kind of like leave like something like behind and just, you know, because I've been doing it for a number of years now. And when I was a new assistant, I was trying to read as much as I could online about how to assist and any kind of information I could get. And there wasn't, I couldn't find really anything about it. And so I wanted to write that article because I'm like, I want to be able to help somebody. That's amazing. It and that's a, exactly why I wrote it. It's a pretty, it, it's, it's not a heavily covered topic. Um, did you submit it to them or did they come to you? I pitched it to them. Yeah. Dude, awesome. Yeah. That's great. I really wanted to do that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you gotta just uh, carve your own path, right? Yeah, make it happen. So what has been, <clears throat> I'm curious, what what has been the fallout, not the fallout, but what have you, what has, how am I gonna put this? Uh, how have things changed? What, hap what happened after you put this article out? I guess that's what I wanna know. I got, I received so many compliments, emails and DMs and messages from so many people, um, artists who are established, that said, wow, I'm going to give this to all of my assistants, yes, which was, totally. I couldn't believe. That was just so amazing to hear that. Artists who I like look up to, it's amazing. And then artists who, who want to assist, who are new, who maybe have never assisted before, who are like, I had no idea how to do this and now I have mm -hmm. a bigger understanding. Um, and so I just, it kind of made me realize like, wow, it's still a topic that's not really talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and there are so many of us, except we don't really talk about it, maybe as much as we should. And there is just a lot of information out there that people are really looking for. I mean, I, I assisted for many years um, in fashion and no one tells you how to do it. Yeah. And you just have to figure it out. Yeah. And uh, it can be a little obtuse sometimes, mm -hmm. like knowing what's expected of you mm -hmm. and knowing how to behave on set or in a hotel room with a celebrity. So I can only imagine that people were really grateful yeah. for that information. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we're gonna dig right into this. What's it really like being a celebrity makeup artist's assistant? You won't hurt my feelings also. <laughs> thick skinned. Um, it's it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you go into every job having no clue what's gonna happen. Who knows how this day is gonna go. Um, you learn a lot and... Um, well, how? Like, yeah. what, don't, more specific. You learn a lot. What do you learn? So do you learn every time you're with a different artist, do you learn how they set up their kit, what their likes and dislikes are? We don't necessarily give you a list of what we expect That's of you so how do you go into that situation uh, and figure it out right so if and I used to do this all the time if I'm working with an artist who I've never worked with before which in the beginning you're gonna do that a lot I would say because what I would do is I would try to you know google their name go on YouTube do they have a makeup tutorial out can you hear them talk can you see mm -hmm. their you know, quirks or their like personality, how they interact with like the model and all that. I would try to get as much information. So I just have an idea of who they are as an artist. Um, and you should know their work as well. And do their research, aesthetic. Yeah, yeah do, do a good amount of research. <clears throat> um, and if you know any other assistants, 
you know, call them, ask, hey, do you know anything about like this artist? Can you give me any tips or, you know, like heads up, anything like that? I would do that all the time. And it's really helpful. Are, are people forthcoming with that information? Usually, yeah. Oh, so well, if you have a good, you know, group of like people around you, yeah, a lot of us try to help each other out. That's really good to hear. It's kind of cool. You need yeah. to know what to expect. I mean, yeah, just a couple like heads up, like, you uh -huh. know, like, do not be on your phone, or this artist like really doesn't like when you do that, or just like little things like that. Oh, that's so helpful. Um, and then when you actually get to the job, you're there, and um, you have to have intuition. You just have kind of, you know, have to use your intuition. How does, you know, is this artist in a good mood today? Is she gonna, uh -huh. you know, talk me through how she wants her, he or she like wants her makeup kit set up or anything like that? Um, you. Just kind of have to use your intuition. Do I hold the eyeshadow palette out? Do I hand them a brush? Are you able to do that yet as an assistant? Have you had all that experience where you're comfortable doing that with that mm -hmm. artist? And everyone's different. And like I said, you know, like you said, you just kind of have to like figure it out on the day and be comfortable in knowing that you're gonna just have to learn on the day. So as an assistant, how can we support you better? Right? Like, because ultimately your job is to support us. Yeah. And we have you there because we either need physical help, uh, if we have multiple people, or we are doing um, a sponsored look, and so we need help recording the products and behind the scenes photos. But like, as, uh, I, I, I don't have new assistants very often because it's a lot of work, right, for mm -hmm. us to have a new person come in and show them everything. So say you've never assisted me before, what would, I be able to do to help you help me go I would say <laughs> hey you know whatever like you could kind of help me do this and then I'll let you know what I need or you know just kind of like hang around here and if I need you you know I'll come and get you or hey you know like whatever I'm gonna have you do like such and such today I'm not gonna have you do any makeup or you know I'm just gonna have you on like set today I'm just gonna you know just okay to, to kind of like you know, give us a rundown of like what to expect for the day. Um, I know like in the beginning, I'm like, what do, what do I do? Do I, do I, it, it was just, it's a lot in the beginning. And I kind of wish I had that in the beginning, like mm -hmm. the artist to say, to kind of understand like, we're really nervous in the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. really nerve wracking. We, there's a lot going through our minds as an assistant as well, because you know, like we don't want, to get in trouble like with the key artist and sure. they, there's just so many things in our mind that we're like we could really mess this up and we're and leaving stress. we want to help right 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 <laughs> Leave, we're leaving stress for you ultimately yeah. makes you do a better job for us I think since so. your article came out I wrote down a uh, a list of what I expect from my assistants and gave it to my agency to give to new people ahead wow. of time mm -hmm. I've never heard of anyone doing that before uh, I just figure it's better, like the way that you do your research on an artist before you work with them, it's just a leg up, right? It's like yeah. just a way to support someone who's there to support me. So hopefully that helps. I've only Has given no it to one person. Has no one ever thought about that before? I, oh, I that's don't, great. I don't, that's really helpful. I've never heard of anyone doing it. Yeah. And, um, it just seems like it would be helpful. Anyway, I haven't given, I don't think we've, I don't think I've had anybody new, new. since I did that, but I'm looking forward to that feedback. That's cool. Yeah. But that was... That was partially um, formulated in my brain because of your article. Oh, right on. Um, okay, so we sort of talked about the fact that you don't really know our likes and dislikes and having to use your intuition. Yeah. So um, I guess I'd like to know, as an assistant, what are your goals? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, what, are your, what do you want to mm -hmm. get out of assisting, and how do you want to do the best job assisting that you can do. Right, well ultimately you wanna get a call back. You wanna get asked again mm -hmm. to, to work with that artist. <clears throat> On the day of the job, the most important thing for me is always and will always be to make the artist feel as confident and as comfortable as they can be. Right. And that's not gonna happen. It may not happen immediately. It may take an hour, two hours. It may take a couple of jobs working together. You know, but that's ultimately my goal. Good goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like whether it's, you know, 
I, if I'm there early and I give the artist a heads up, hey, just want to let you know I'm in the parking lot waiting for you. I'm here early mm -hmm. if you need help with your bags. All of that, I, I mean, I would love to receive a text like that if I were in your shoes. It's great. The, so helpful. She's there. No stress. I don't have to worry if she's going to be late. Yeah. I have help with my bags. Easy morning. You know, just like little things like that. I, I have to say, I'm just going to jump in occasionally and, and elaborate a little bit on what you're saying because I want to give both sides of this also. Like, right. all of your helpful tips for how to be an assistant and also what actually really resonates with me as the key artist. Mm -hmm. um, having someone there ahead of time who has especially if it's like a big commercial job or a location it's different for a studio but having someone there who's like okay I know where we're going I can help you with your there's stairs I'm gonna help you with your bag mm -hmm. it just eliminates that initial um, sort of not even anxiety but like uh, just trying to you're entering a new situation every day so to have a little bit of that alleviated is so helpful and especially I know that there are artists who have an assistant with them every day. That's not me. So when I need an assistant, I really need someone who's going to help me get through the day. There's a reason that you're a body in that room. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that's huge. Having that sort of sorted out before we get there. So Yeah. And also important. if it's on location and if I'm headed there early and if I'm like, oh gosh, okay, do not turn here, turn yeah. there. Yeah. I could give you that information, yeah. the artist that information ahead of time to just kind of help, help have a nice, easy morning. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and also um, being there 10 minutes early is really helpful. Yeah. Being, you know, I, I used to work with someone who was like, if you're on time, you're 10 minutes late. Um, yeah. It's a little bit different in a celebrity situation where you're going to someone's house or um, hotel room because you want to be on time. So yes, be five, 10 minutes early, but don't knock on their right. door <laughs> <laughs> or sit in the lobby oh, no. quietly and wait until, yeah. I always wait till that exact minute yes. because sometimes they have kids, they're sometimes, the th yeah, they've got stuff to do and they expect you at three. And if you're there at 2.50, that's going to stress them out because yeah. they're, they are probably counting on that extra 10 minutes. Yep, they're not ready for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. but to be at the location is yes. super, super helpful. Yes. Definitely. Okay, so you talked about um, w once you actually are hired by someone, Googling them, looking at their work, maybe checking out their Instagram or their yeah. YouTube, but what advice can you give people who want to assist who have not broken into the assisting world? Okay. Oh, there's so much. There, there's so much I could say. <clears throat> okay, so like, give me a top five or top ten. Okay. Well, I would say number one, know that it may take a while. Oh, it yeah. took me one year after I had an agent tell me, okay, I'll add you to our list. After that moment, it took me one year to get a job, to get a gig. One year. What did you do in that year? Um, you have to have a part-time job mm -hmm. or a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And that's also a topic people don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have a second job. Yeah, time management. Or, or like a that. first job. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Um... I would say that. You know what? I worked in a, a coffee shop in New York, like a cafe, um, and I would work from four till eleven or something, so that I could have my days free to oh. test or assist. Yeah. So it it is helpful. I mean, a little bit like an actor, right? Like yeah. you're gonna have a, a job that has mm -hmm. some flexibility where you can get someone to cover for you, right? Um, and where you can maybe work evenings. So yes. you can be free in the day. Yep. I, okay. I, I worked at a restaurant for a very long time. And That's I did that. really good <clears throat> advice. Mm -hmm. Yep. And also, in the restaurant I worked at, I met really great people. I met oh. actors and directors uh -huh. and producers and kind of knew that whole industry. You know, I had like an idea of like who all those people were. Oh, it was kind so of cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Different perspective. Um, yeah. It was a great experience. Um, I would also say in that time, you have the time to practice. So practice makeup. Do it on yourself. Practice makeup on your friends. Do little tests, you know, like things like that. And really, um, I had a man tell me once, you know, he said, become a master of your craft. Mm -hmm. That's like the most important thing as an artist, I, f I feel. And while you have that time and you're not assisting and you're not working as a makeup artist yet, just practice and really do your homework. Super good advice. Yeah, That's the whole 10,000 10, hours um, 
concept, right? Like you're not actually good at something until you've put 10,000 hours into it. Mm -hmm. And 10,000 hours is like 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. But yes, the more you have your hands-on experience, the better. And also I would say, um, go to Sephora. Go, and not just Sephora, because they don't always have everything. Go to all the counters. So like go to the fancy department stores, go to the drug stores, and look at products because one of the things that bonds me with my assistants is talking product. Yeah. And if someone knows product and knows textures, then I'm like, okay, they know, you, you may not have that much experience um, actually doing makeup on someone, but if you know your products, that's super helpful. Because then I feel like you're at least yeah. a curious mind, you are obsessed with makeup, obsessed with products and textures, and that speaks to me um, about enthusiasm and stuff. Okay, so that's two. Three, I, I have to say this, I have to talk about it. You have to focus on your Instagram too. Because if you do reach out to an artist or an agent, they are mm -hmm. going to look at your Instagram mm -hmm. page almost immediately. It's exactly what I do if I'm gonna work with, a new, like with an artist I've never worked with. Mm -hmm. They're gonna do the same thing. So they're gonna go on your Instagram page. And you don't have to have all the cover, you know, like you're not going to be doing like magazine covers yet. And so, you know, like your Instagram is not going to be amazing yeah. yet, but they also want to get an idea of who you are. Are you, yeah. do you have like a cocktail in your hand? Are you at a bar <laughs> in every picture? Do I don't know. About, I've, I've, I guess I would, no. <laughs> I guess I would hold that against someone. <laughs> I've heard an artist say like, kind of like make a comment about it, but anyway. Well, because it's not entirely, because is because it's too Facebooky. Like, is it too like this is my life, not this is my work? Like, should someone have if someone is breaking into being an assistant, should they have a, a professional Instagram page and then they can have their private life personal page? Is that sort of that's the information I've been? Getting. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll tell you one other thing really quick is um, and and you might find this interesting. If I see someone's Instagram page who wants to assist me, whose work is too good like too developed, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not really interested because I feel like, well, they're doing fine. They don't need to assist me. They're doing great on their own. Um, if, if I, I also know that they're not going to be with me for very long. Mm. If they're at that cusp of, um, really being successful on their own, I'll be like, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll work together like for six months and then yeah. I'll never be able to get them again. So That's interesting. it kind of works both ways. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, well, you have a good point, right. And I don't think anyone's going to maybe hold it against you, but just the artist and or the agent wants to have an idea of who you are. And your aesthetic, yes, right? Like yeah. if there's like feather eyelashes, um, and like, uh, if it doesn't look modern, I might, I might hesitate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, modern, like modern makeup, like pretty right. makeup. Right, pretty makeup. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would say I hate to say it, but I have to say it. You have to, you do have to focus on your Instagram. It's yeah. just what it is now. Um, and use your resources. So we do have Instagram. So we do yeah. have it. So use it, and you can now contact the artist who you want to work with directly. It's true. That's like incredible. Um. I'm, I keep chiming in, but it's because I have to respond to some of these. Uh, and if you do DM a makeup artist directly, please use um, your manners mm -hmm. and full sentences and uh, treat it almost as a job interview because it is your first impression with that person. So if you write a thoughtful DM to someone, you're much um, more likely to get a response than if you just write a one sentence thing saying, do you ever need an assistant? Because it's because there's a lot of that is a fact. There's a lot of emails coming in. There's a lot of emails going to agencies. There's right. a lot of DMs coming in yep. asking, and it is a lot of work mm -hmm. for us to take on a new assistant. It's mm -hmm. it's more work than help for quite a while. I was told once that I was given the opportunity solely on my email and my and the way I emailed. Yes, solely. Yeah, it's like oh wow. Is it that really how we is connected? Important. No, I don't think so. From the so. agency then? Uh, I, I had an assistant for years who, who um, stalked me on Instagram. In the kindest way, Melissa Murdoch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but 
Yeah. She was very persistent, yeah. um, very thoughtful, very kind, and very uh, respectful in her emails to me. Mm -hmm. And I write notes. Um, so if someone writes me a nice email or something, I'll put them in my phone as assistant, their name, and then in my notes I write how I got connected. If it was a, re a referral from another makeup artist, if it was recommended my agent from my agency, or if it was a an email or DM, so that I know how they found me. The true Fiona is really coming out now, and her organization <laughs> skills. I do my best. <laughs> Life is so chaotic. You are I need, organized. I need order. Wow, impressive. But yes, oh. it is. It is great to have that direct access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was unheard of mm -hmm. twenty years ago. Yep. Contact them mm -hmm. yourself. It's amazing. You could reach out to an artist yourself and ask them. Um, and then also, I would say, you know, try as many different ways as you can. And just as creative as we are in our art, you have to be as creative in the ways that you're trying to become an assistant. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really, really, really true. If everyone is trying to do it one way, Maybe you try to do it another way. Just try. Keep on trying. Keep on trying. Mm -hmm. Persistence. Mm -hmm. Persistence is, I mean, that's what's, it's a, it's not an easy job, right? So mm -hmm. like, and there's a lot of people doing it. So persistence in all aspects of uh, your career are yeah. helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? What else? Oh, I think that was a lot. <laughs> that was, that was maybe five. That was very thorough. <laughs> Okay, so now that you are in the room with a makeup artist that you've been dying to work with, mm -hmm. or maybe even someone you have not been dying to work with, yes. you learn from Everyone. everybody. Now what? What's your, what do you, what, what is your presence in the room? What, yeah. uh, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a tightrope mm -hmm. being an assistant. Mm -hmm. You need to be present, but not overly present. So what are your tips and advice to <clears throat> people who are newly assisting for being in the room? I think that some people feel like maybe they need to be a big personality so that right. they are part of the team. Right. It's a, it's, that's a really, really What's good it really point. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's such a good point. And I was, just, I just had this conversation with someone the other day. As an assistant, we don't always feel like we're important and we get looked over a lot. And it's not always easy to feel like you're part of like the whole shoot, you know? Um, <clears throat> but you are. And I could, I could tell so many instances of, I mean, it's helped me to get other jobs. I've had like a producer kind of like reach out to me and say, mm -hmm. the artist, it's a small budget. The, they aren't going to be able to do it, whatever. Are, mm -hmm. are you available? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't even like know this. I don't even like remember her. She remembered me because I was quiet or whatever. Somebody's always watching. So just Somebody's know, even though it, <laughs> yeah. So just know as an assistant, it's hard to feel as though you're important. You are so important. And, and even if you don't have a whole lot of experience as an assistant, you could be a great, great assistant on day number one. You really can. If the artist is doing eyeliner, have Q-tips ready with like Bioderma and just like little things like that, yeah. you know, like even if like you are not comfortable, you know, like handing a brush or handing over a color or like choosing a color, you could be really helpful by being, you know, positive like energy very calm, important a calm energy very important and to just be a happy person on set along with the artist it's really helpful mm -hmm. it is having um and, and even if you're wrong in thinking ahead like even if i'm like oh i hate bioderma or whatever at least i've noticed that you are paying attention to what i'm doing um trying to foresee what I might need mm -hmm. to make my job go more smoothly. Right. Um, I have a recurring nightmare that is I'm on set and I've got <laughs> some stuff in the trailer, some stuff on set, some stuff in my pouch, some stuff over there, and I can't get to all my things in time for my client. Mm -hmm. That's my stress dream. So <laughs> how does the worst? They're terrible. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one. But having someone try to, to sort of um, think ahead 
for you and mm -hmm. foresee what you might need mm -hmm. to make your job go faster. Is, yeah. It's super valuable. Just pay attention. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. It may seem like nothing's happening. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think another good um, learning opportunity, if you're on a set with someone, not just getting someone ready in a hotel room, is look at the lighting setup and learn your light. Learn what looks good, what doesn't look good. Does it look good to have a top light over um, a woman who's over 40? Nope. You want the light in front. And the reason I'm saying that is because I have clients who rely on me on commercials or video projects to make sure that the light is flattering. So the more you know, you may not think it's important, but the more you know about what's happening all around you, how production yes. works, it's such a good <clears throat> oh opportunity because gosh. you're not actually busy all the time, right? right? Like to really look at how everything is working and everything is intentional on mm -hmm. a set. So um, it's a good time to absorb. That's such a good point. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Um, what, okay, so, so what are some, I think sometimes it's great to work backwards. What are some big no-nos on set as an assistant? Let's go, mm. let's do that. Cause it's a little hard to understand sometimes what, you know, you'd say be a good, be a right. positive person or paying attention, right, but like, right, right. what are the ones that will not get you asked back? If you're too chatty. True. If it's a chatty room and everyone's really, really chatty and there's some like, you know, downtime, then, you know, it's, you know, it's okay to enjoy your job a little, but if it's a quiet room, which it is a lot of the time, you, you know, if you're that chatty person who just won't shut up, people will remember you that way. And, and it's kind of a guarantee to not get called back. And not just the makeup artist, but like right. everyone will Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like who's that person who just won't stop talking? What else? Mm-hmm. Um, Gosh, I can't, I'm having, um, I'm having a moment. I can't think at the moment. You're having a senior moment? I'm having a senior <laughs> moment. More tea. Uh, okay, so let me see if I can jump in. Um, I'm not being proactive when there is downtime. Okay, right. Like cleaning brushes or, hey, can I help organize anything? Do you need anything in your kit that needs... Um, some attention mm -hmm. or um, I know one thing I'm just gonna touch on that for one Go second ahead. so keep that in your brain okay uh, I, I love it if I come back to a station if we're set up on on a um, photo set photo studio if my stuff is not put away but just tidied because it gets really frenetic right like things get messy fast so if I go to set and you're not on set with me but I come back and my stuff is not rearranged, but tidied. Right. Super helpful. Mm. Super helpful. Yeah. And I notice it. Okay. What was the Good other tips. Yeah. Um, oh, I would say to like arriving to a job and you don't have a kit that's like prepared, mm. that doesn't have a lot, or you know, doesn't have everything you need. Like for example, I've um, I've overheard like an assistant not having like body lotion in their like set bag yes. and the makeup artist on set did not have hers. Right. That so happens. it's like, why do I have this assistant if she doesn't even have what I need and she's not even prepared. Okay. Um, Quick diversion. Then yeah. let's talk about what should be in your set bag as an assistant. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh. Yeah. I feel like we should cut for a second. Okay. Let's go cut. <laughs> let's come because back to that. Because this, that is actually in my notes. Oh. So. All right, so we were just talking about being on set, being on a, on a shoot. So what, as an assistant, do you need to have in your set bag to support the makeup artist? Hmm. I, okay, I was gonna make a joke, but I'll, I'll make the joke later. Well, okay, I have carried tea bags in my makeup kit, um, and it's actually come in handy. Really? A client wanted to have English breakfast tea so badly she just needed English breakfast tea. And the whole day just basically stopped because we didn't have, we didn't have English breakfast tea on set. It was just like one of those days where we yep. just didn't yep. have it. And I had it. Oh Yay, my God, you rescue. saved the day. I literally saved the day. Everyone was like, thank you. I just had, yeah, in, yeah. 
English. So you never know what you actually. You might really, need. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. But I would say. Be a Girl Scout. Be yeah, prepared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Advil, like little things, you know. Mm -hmm. Advil. Um, I would say eyelash comb. Mm -hmm. Eyebrow brush. Always. Clear brow gel. Agreed. Two concealer palettes, a light and a dark. Just to, always having your set bag. Always having your set bag. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's come in handy so many times where I'm like, oh, I'm so happy I have this. Do you keep your set bag packed always? Or do you half and unpack half. it and a uh, half? Yeah. So you have the basics in there. Yes, and these are the mm -hmm. basics. Okay, yeah. all right, continue. Um, a press powder that is not gonna add any color. I was just gonna ask you why, because I felt like people might wanna know. Yes. Yeah. Um, and body lotion. And something that's not too shiny. Exactly. Because maybe it's a job that you don't want too much shine on your body if it's like black and white and you don't want it to be too shiny. I learned that from Fiona. It's tricky with... We had to take it down. <laughs> well, it's it tricky with shiny. lighting. You never know mm -hmm. what's going to happen, right? You mm -hmm. don't know how the light is going to read and something to emollient can look really greasy with like a super intense highlight. Yep. And so you need something that's quite neutral. Mm hmm I'll go, I'll go on more about that in a minute, but oh, okay. I'll, I'll tell you what's in my okay. set bag after. Oh, I like this. Mm. Um, a mirror, mm -hmm. if the client has an eyelash in there or something. Q-tips and bioderma. Q-tips? Mm -hmm. Specifically Q-tips? Or cotton buds? Cotton buds. Cotton buds and two different kinds. Oh, gosh. Should cotton. we talk about the difference? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup, I, Hannah. It's I, a setup. <laughs> I actually don't carry Q-tips. I actually don't. No. Do you want me to say the brand? It was okay to say the brand. Sure, you can say whatever you want. Muji. Muji. Let's talk about <laughs> They're why. They're tightly wound. Exactly. And it's not going to like make a mess. It's not going to like you know like leave any lint. If you're cleaning up eyeliner, it does it really efficiently. If you got those really skinny ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a super tightly wound cotton bud is different than a Q-tip. A Q-tip has a looser fiber. And so, uh, oh, it's giving me heart palpitations thinking about it. If someone pulls out a Ziploc bag that's full of Q-tips, like not in a box, and they're just been like rattling around, the fibers unwind, and I promise you, you're gonna go underneath someone's eyes, and that fiber is gonna get caught in their eyelash, oh. and they're gonna be like this yeah. for like the next half an hour. Yep. I've got something in my eye, and you're just like, fuck, pardon me, but like, <laughs> it's it's. It wastes time, right? Like the our whole job is to be time efficient. Yeah, I feel like. So, Muji makes great tiny cotton buds. You can go to Daiso and get slightly larger, very tightly wound cotton buds. They're usually sold for children. Don't ever put those in children's ears. Yeah, but they are like meant to be like children's cotton buds. But Asian cotton buds are are just the way to go. Yeah. So, why? sorry. Why is that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I haven't used a Q-tip in like 20 years. Q-tips are in my bathroom. Exactly. Could There's you, a time and yeah, a place for yeah. a Q-tip. They're great for cleaning <laughs> keyboards. But um, oh. uh, not for under the eyes, in my opinion. You should do a whole video on, you know, Q-tip purposes. Everything you could do with a Q-tip. Keyboard. Yes. <laughs> versus Q-tips versus cotton buds. Like a battle between the two. Okay. You could do a video on it. I'm sure you could. <laughs> I have a lot to say about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. What else is in your set bag? I would say that those are the main components of a set bag that I arrive with. And then I'll add things. So if, whatever. If there's like a bright lip situation going on, I'll have like a bright lip palette. Mm -hmm. And I'll add all the things that like we've used on that day in my set bag. So do you try to mm. emulate with your products what the key makeup artist is using? Exactly. Very smart. Yep. I think that Bobbi Brown lip palette comes in handy all the time because it's just sort of like an everything palette and it kind of can cover all of the bases mm -hmm. on set. And you'd be like, I kind of have this rosy, glossy thing and then you can make it yep. if it's not already in there, but it's probably already in there. That's a great palette. It's a great palette, especially as resistant because mm -hmm. it covers all your bases. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you about my step bag. Okay. It is a finely honed set bag. I have a towel, safety pinned. It's first of all, it's a fanny pack mm -hmm. because I don't want this mm -hmm. scramble. Hands free. I need to be hands free. 
Again, it's about time. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, uh, a little black sort of washcloth attached to it so that any, anytime I have lotion on my hands or like body makeup, I have a way to clean my hands. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's pockets inside where things are specifically organized. So again, I know where everything is. There's a matte lip balm, a glossy lip balm, individually wrapped cotton buds. Um, I bought all of the ones that existed that were left in America from Shuamura years ago. Still have a closet full of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Melissa will testify to the <laughs> amount of cotton buds I have in my closet. Let's get Melissa on the phone. <laughs> um, tweezers. Eyebrow spoolie. Clear eyebrow gel. Mints. Uh, it's heavy. Baby wipes. Uh, that was my dog barking. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, lightweight body lotion, a shimmery body lotion, a very emollient body lotion. Because every once in a while you're like, oh, uh, I need a highlight. Uh, I don't know what to use. And then you just like whack on some mm -hmm. Waleda skin food. Um, a pair of glasses. Uh, let's be quiet. Um, and then that's it. And then there's empty pockets for where lipstick goes, concealer goes blushes go, etc. But those things are always in there and then I just leave it packed in my bag. Mm -hmm. Yep, with everyone's individual cup for all the different talent and you have an individual cup. Yes, that's super helpful too, your... with their yep. name written on it. Because mm -hmm. I usually mm -hmm. can't remember people's. If there's like eight models, I can't remember their names so until later in the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, one other tip, I'm just gonna say, that's very personal to me, but as far as baby wipes are concerned, mm. <laughs> another mm. one of my idiosyncrasies mm -hmm. is after many years of using many different types of baby wipes, if it's if you hand me a linty baby wipe, I'm gonna be pretty bummed out because then I'm trying to get the lint off my hands. Mm. That um, that I, it just takes me a long time to get that off my hands. Also so, too oily, maybe. Some are too oily. Yeah. I have found the Whole Foods 365 wipes to be the hero product. Yeah. All right, sorry, slight diversion, but <laughs> hopefully a useful one. I mean, that's I, like some. I think very, some good info. very useful. Yeah. I always found your set bag to be very, very sufficient. Oh, Thank it you. was one time I didn't have any body lotion, and the rest of the day I was cursing. For me, I don't remember who mm. it was, but I didn't have it, and I was, um, I, I, I hated myself the rest of the day. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> No, I am. Yeah, no. I I I had you a hairstylist. I take my job seriously. I had a hairstylist once tell me you need to relax because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, like the makeup artist hates me. I didn't have any lotion. She's like, um, she's not thinking that. Like relax. That's probably true. Yeah, she's moved on. Yeah, They've she's moved on. Moved on. <laughs> They've moved on. And I yeah. But then you always oh had lotion God. after that, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you. You adapted, you learned. Yeah. And you don't, I mean, just have a big thing of lotion at home and then put it in a small container or buy the travel sized things yes. or whatever. Yes, and then whatever. just leave it in your set bag. Yes. That's really important. Oh, and yes. straws. I get straws. asked. Straws. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to have in your set bag. I don't really care. No. If mm -hmm. someone drinks out of a bottle, unless mm -hmm. it's a very um, meticulous lip. Okay. I don't really care. Okay. I'll just patch it up. But yes. Production gets funny about straws. They always want to have a straw nearby. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have. Again, I use individually wrapped straws that I get in Asia. But or put them in a Ziploc yeah. bag. Don't don't have the paper ones because the paper comes off oh. and then they're not sanitary, right? So if you're right. gonna carry straws, oh, put them in a Ziploc. Yeah. Don't have like half a dozen oh. paper straws in your set bag because they're yeah. not gonna stay sanitary. Right, right. And the client's not gonna like to look at that and no. know that they're a straw is open and exposed and germs have gotten to it. Better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of other things I want to cover. Okay. Let's start with um, the fact that being an assistant really preps you for what it's like to be a makeup artist in the sense that we have to figure stuff out on the day all the time. So whether someone has really tricky skin or uh, if they have an allergic reaction to having their eyebrows plucked or anything, right? You mm -hmm. never really know what's gonna come your way. Mm -hmm. How does being an assistant prep you for being a better makeup artist? 
Well, I first have to say, I can't count how many times I've been on a job as an assistant and told myself, oh, I'm so glad I'm only the assistant today. <laughs> I'm like, I Sometimes would I'm not. Jealous. Yes. <laughs> I would like to be the assistant on huh? certain days. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't have to deal with that or I'm so glad I wasn't in that situation. And even though you are, all of the pressure is really not on the assistant at that moment. It's on the key artist. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't imagine what's going through their mind and how you handle it is what I learn and how I learn. Mm -hmm. So something like bleaching a brow. I'm going to say this. I have always wanted to learn how to bleach a brow and I've learned how to bleach a brow because of you. Oh, I thought it was the coolest thing years ago, like looking at like Allure magazine or, you know, like Vogue magazine and like on the runway, everyone's got like a bleached brow and I'm like, oh man. I want to know how to do that. Um, and so if I hadn't assisted with you that day, I would not have known how to do a bleached brow. That's an asset because you add up all those little experiences mm -hmm. over the course of years and years and years. And when it's my turn or your turn to be the key artist, you're that much more confident, like walking into a job, knowing you've, you've experienced and done so much. And True you know how to handle almost every situation or like an allergic reaction. I've seen that happen and the key artist I know was dying inside. The client's eye basically just yeah. swelled up from we don't know what. And it may not have even been the makeup. Sure. It may not have been. Um, and she had some kind of antihistamine um, in her makeup kit and Ooh. gave it to the client. 20 minutes, gone. Oh, I'm gonna add that to my kit. We were, See, she was gonna all learn. Yeah, something. and the makeup artist was like, I don't even know how I had this in my kit. I just had it. That's brilliant. Yeah. And Advil I know and a history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> yep. And the eye just went from, you know, here to just kind of got smaller and it was fine in like 20 minutes and we could carry on. Mm. And so just like all those little moments, and you said how to work on skin that's not flawless. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. you know it's 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 reality. Mm -hmm. Not every, I mean, a, a lot of us have skin with flaws. Ac mm -hmm. Actually, almost everybody right. does. Right. And so. And we're lucky that most of the people in Hollywood, it, part of their job is taking care of their skin. Right. But that's not always, it's not always the case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not always the case. Yep. And skin tones that maybe you're not comfortable with mm -hmm. yet as as a new makeup artist, you can learn how to become comfortable and you could like watch an artist who knows how to do every skin tone and you could watch them and see all the products that are, you know, in their kit. I mean, it's priceless. And yeah. that's why I've always had the mentality that I'm not trying to like rush the whole process of being an assistant. I know artists who they've only assisted a year, two years, three years, who've never assisted. And I've assisted a, maybe a little bit longer than a whatever. But for me, it's just like I'm gaining invaluable experience and yeah. it's making me more confident. I miss watching people work. You learn so really? much. I mean, I guess that's where YouTube comes in handy and is such a gift because you can really see all of the little things that you can't. You just need to see it, mm -hmm. right? You need to see how it's done. And I would also say, um, ask me a question, especially with doing women of color, like, or, or, or a tricky skin situation. Ask, I'm, I'm so happy to share and teach and um, mentor. And I also want to know that there's curiosity in my assistant. I don't want you to think you know how to do everything because why would I have you there? Then you're good enough right. to go on your own. Go do it, go spread your wings. But like, right. If you ask me, how, why did I use that product, or how did you, make, why did you make the decision to do that on that person's face? I'm more than happy to tell you because mm -hmm. this is 25 years of figuring it out and asking other people questions. So, mm -hmm. if I see someone on their phone and not paying attention to what I'm doing, I'm like, well, mm -hmm. do you not want to learn? Because really, right. that's like, <clears throat> I mean, isn't that like 90% of the reason that you're it there is. is to learn? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it's a miss, missed opportunity. So yeah, yeah. Be curious. Um, I would say you really do love to teach and you always share mm. and have always shared. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Yeah. It's how we learn. Share the knowledge. Um, what were we talking about? 
where did we, how did we get there? We were talking about, oh, uh, sort of growing into being a makeup artist. Yes, and also we, um, a lot of it is just kind of, you know, like figuring it out. Yes. And how does that help you as an assistant? Right. Yeah. I'd already moved on to the next question right. in my mind. Um, <clears throat> which sort of brings me to developing your own aesthetic as an assistant. And how do you find, like I, I assisted Pat McGrath, whose work I love and worship, but I, at that time, her work was very experimental and I am not that person, right? Like right. I'm more of a beauty makeup <clears throat> artist and mm -hmm. I always sort of knew that's where I was going versus it being a very yeah. avant-garde makeup artist. So mm -hmm. it's, I learned tons, but how do you, really try and figure out who you are and what your likes and dislikes are as an artist and, and um, nourish those. Yeah, I, well I would say it takes time because um, you know in the beginning you may not know and you may say well I like everything um, but as a new artist you first have to learn how to do pretty makeup Agreed. before you could really do anything else. Um, and I would say try everything. Don't turn down any assistant job because guaranteed you will learn something. So try editorial, commercial, um, you know, ad, like whatever, like advertising, celebrity. Um, try everything because in the beginning I thought I would do like fashion and editorial. In the beginning I was like, that's what I want to do without a doubt. I want to do fashion and I'm doing something completely different. I'm not doing fashion. Um, but how do you know unless you try and you see what you love? Um, and then um, another thing is you'll, you'll just learn how to trust your eye. Um, but it takes a lot of time. So in the beginning, I would look at other people's work and I would say, oh, that looks so pretty. Am I wrong because I wouldn't do it that way? Or if an artist chooses like a nude lip over like a bright lip or whatever, and I would say, oh, I would have choose or whatever, you know, chosen a different lip. I'm not necessarily wrong, mm -hmm. but that's who I am as an artist. Yeah. And so it just takes time to like develop you know, confidence in your aesthetic. It just takes time. Yeah, exactly. And then also just trust your eye. You know, like when you're like doing your own makeup, if you think that like it'll look better doing it a certain way, trust your instinct because it makes, it's you as the artist and that's what makes you you. Yeah, it's all instinct, right? Yeah. I mean, instinct and um, hours put in and uh, a lot of looking. Yes. A lot of looking is mm -hmm. what you respond to. Yep. And I would say, you know, at the end of the day, every makeup artist is going to do it differently. And it'll all look beautiful. Yeah. You, you know? can give five makeup artists the same five products and the looks would all be very different. Yeah. And that's amazing. It is. It's and it'll really all cool. look incredible. So, yeah, you, you are your own artist and you are you and no one's exactly the same. So, you know, like, be okay with that. Agreed. It took me a while, though. I will be honest. Yeah, it takes a lot of just hours doing the job to figure out what you respond to and what you like and what you don't like. And it, it is <clears> like <throat> just time put in and um, sort of a visceral reaction to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then, same time, you should also push yourself so that you're not comfortable. Yeah, yes. But that's what testing is for or or doing makeup on your friend, like, you know, experiment with it. The, the thing I... Um, miss really is those days of experimenting and being able to fail mm -hmm. because I'm in a position where if I do fail I'm losing a job right or a client or there's there's not as much room for just playing I can't so imagine you having a moment that you felt like you failed but you know what I mean like there's there's a little less um freedom yeah there's the price the stakes are a little bit higher so sometimes you may be like well I don't know maybe I shouldn't go that far or push it that far unless you have a client who is really open to that but right. who lets you go there right and you don't always have that mm -hmm. um and so sometimes you feel like you may not have the opportunity to push yourself as much as you could that's why it's great to have I mean I work with a photographer who loves pushing beauty and loves being experimental and that's where I kind of get my yayas out um, is when I work with him because I also know that I if I fail he'll let me do it again if we have the time mm -hmm. or he'll give me the time mm -hmm. to get it right 
And when you do red carpet, there isn't the time to, there's less time to mess up and correct than on set doing an editorial, especially editorial duty. Um, right. So I, I kind of, I miss, like take advantage of the time that you have to um, experiment and play and do your mom's makeup, do your sister's makeup, do your aunt's makeup, do your brother's makeup, do whoever, mm -hmm. and just grab faces and, and experiment with what feels good. Right. Mm -hmm. I would also say one more thing, and this is just me like speaking on my experience and like what I've learned and what I've gone through, because everyone's gone through something different. <clears throat> For me, I remember in the beginning, there was a lot of pressure, or I felt a lot of pressure to do makeup like this way and to have like this mm -hmm. aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Like during the time I was, you know, coming up, there was a certain like makeup aesthetic that was really, really popular and everybody was doing it, but I didn't really like that look. Mm -hmm. And I felt so much pressure to do that kind of makeup. And so every time I would try, I would just feel awful about myself because I didn't have that energy. I didn't enjoy like what I was doing. And so it never looked right because it yes. wasn't what I it's wanted. It's not genuine. Yes, it, exactly. Um, and that also took me a long time to kind of overcome and say, it's okay if this isn't my style. 100%. There's a place <clears throat> for everyone, mm -hmm. right? There's a place for very theatrical makeup artists. There's a place for very minimalist makeup artists. There's a place for um, uh, just pretty bridal makeup. There's, there's work for everyone in mm -hmm. every capacity. So just... Be genuine with who you are. And, and maybe you can experiment with that and then learn like, ooh, I really actually like that shading technique or, but find a way to incorporate it into your aesthetic, right? So like you can take a little bit from everything right. and bring it into your pool of knowledge and adapt it so that it's your own and then you can go forward from there. Yeah. But, uh, but ultimately like, if you have a client <clears throat> who wants a certain makeup that's not your aesthetic, you're not gonna bring your A-game to it and you're not gonna really give them what they want. So it has to be a good match between aesthetics or needs aren't gonna get met. Right. Yours or theirs. Yeah. Um, and that's hard. It doesn't, you know, you don't always know that on the day. <clears throat> but the more you practice and the more you learn what your strengths are, the, the stronger it gets. Yeah, and that's why I always say, take your time. There's mm. really no rush. If you're going to be doing this the rest of your life, that's right. You really, you you have a lot of time. There's pressure. People feel pressure. Yes. That especially now, I feel like because your work is so public because yeah. of Instagram, mm -hmm. that everyone has to be progressing at a certain rate, and that's yes. not true. No one used to see our work. Right. Like no one. Yeah. Because unless you called in our portfolio to see our work, I mean, even before there were websites. But like, if you did an editor, yeah. like if I did an edit editorial for mm. an Italian magazine, unless you were a total magazine head and you went to the magazine stands in New York every I wouldn't week, see it. no one's gonna see that. Now everyone sees everything, so you can do a bunch of tests and have content for your Instagram, which is incredible. Right. You can do some random European editorial, and someone will see it. So. Um, that in that way the game has changed and it's interesting because people also expect more work which is you know I don't post every single job I do there's so much pressure on mm -hmm. yeah that's you know especially as a new artist <clears throat> yeah, because that's a lot of pressure. yes and then now you know a lot is expected out of a new artist to be able to show all the work they have done before even assisting <laughs> it's like it's crazy yeah yeah so take your time and learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> let me ask you what advice you have for assistants that are already assisting. Oh, okay. I would probably give the same advice I give to myself every single day, which is to never forget where I was a couple years ago when I was just dying to assist. I was just so excited and was just dying to make it happen. Um, and to realize how far you've come along, you know, to, and always have goals in mind so that you never feel as though you're just not going anywhere. I always have a checklist. Ooh, that's smart. Yeah, and it's really amazing. Like once you do have goals and you kind of cross off your goals, 
and then you realize and you could like visually see all the progress you're making because like you forget mm -hmm. like after a couple years you're like okay I've been doing this a while but if you look at a couple years ago and you're like well I wanted to have this in my you know I wanted to do this kind of job I wanted to assist like this person and this person mm -hmm. and I wanted to do that and you realize you've achieved all of your goals satisfying yeah and it's you know um it's easy to lose track of it all especially in a business where it's just so competitive mm -hmm. um and you kind of like you lose like sight of it all and you um you know it's not always easy to um to keep track of it all i guess you could say sure i mean there's no corner office right in makeup right you're right. always working towards your next job so it is hard to feel like you've checked off goals right so i think that's really handy and also i think um intention is important mm -hmm. and i'm only just learning this but saying what you want is it's the first step in getting where you need to go right oh i mean if you gosh. don't let yourself have the luxury of dreaming mm -hmm. for something you're never going to get there because mm -hmm. you have to dream big to do big things i just heard that at a tennis tournament <laughs> <laughs> on television but it stuck with me because i think that's a good lesson this girl is 18 she i mean i don't watch tennis but i was watching it with my dad and my stepmother and she's 18 and she was she worked so hard she was physically breaking down during this game wow. and was falling apart mm. and almost physically unable to do it and then did it and won and one of the things that she said her mom said to her was um you have to dream big to do big things and if you don't allow yourself permission to do that you're going to hold yourself back so i think writing a list of goals is important mm -hmm. even little ones yep nothing is more satisfying than crossing something off a list yes yep and then you realize oh i'm actually i'm actually making progress right because it doesn't feel progress. like progress sometimes. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, another thing I would say that I know we're all guilty of, we all do it because it's human nature, is try not to compare yourself to yeah. anyone else. Yeah. We all came from different places. We all know different people. We have different experiences. We have different connections. And we're just like different people. So to look at somebody and say, well, I wish I were in that you know, like in their shoes, or I wish, you know, I was doing better than I am now. It's not always the case. It's a very modern struggle. Mm -hmm. Especially because of Instagram now. Yeah. And I know all of us deal with this where you're looking at Instagram as a new artist, you're like, I didn't post anything today, but everyone else posted something. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to get down on yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know what, as important as Instagram is in our business, in the overall grand scheme of life, I don't, it's not as important for me, you know, I'm not going to yeah. like lose sleep over not like posting an Instagram, you know, I don't want it to ever like make me feel as an, like that I'm an awful person or that I'm right. a terrible artist. And it has made me feel that way in the past. And I've had to overcome all of that. And it's really hard. So maybe just try not to, you know, compare yourself as much. I think that's fair. I mean, I think that's fair in all aspects of life. It's hard and it's a, it's a conscious, um, it's an act of consciousness to, to not fall into that trap. But it's I think it's, it's human yeah. nature, right? Yeah. So I think that's really good advice. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else that you, oh. Enjoy, yes. enjoy being a makeup artist yes. assistant. Enjoy it. It's, it's so much fun. Yeah. And like you said, the pressure is not on you necessarily I mean there's some pressure obviously, there, but there is and we feel it yes yeah. but not as much yeah. as a key artist yeah so, yeah. so I would say just enjoy it it's fun it is it's a pretty I really enjoyed my time as an assistant I wish I had um, I kind of wish that I had assisted more people and maybe even done it longer mm. honestly because you also don't know what an incredible situation you're in when you're in it when you're really young and like what oh, an amazing yeah. opportunity it is you may not actually be cognizant of that so definitely sort of appreciating where you are is a good plan mm. okay so I think we should probably wrap this up even okay. though we could really talk forever but okay. um is there anything that you want to ask me yeah 
Yes, gosh, there's, there's so many questions I could ask that I want to ask, but we have time for one. Okay, Probably fine. One. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so let's, if you have the opportunity to experiment a little and maybe really go there with a client who will allow you to do that, so let's say for like netball or something, and let's say Lily Collins. How do you dream up those looks? I mean, how do you, how do you, like, how do you become inspired? And then, you know, after it's kind of in your mind, how are you able to translate that to a face, and then make it look incredible and have it last? Ooh, the have it last part. <laughs> <laughs> those are long nights. Um, all right. Well, I'll start with. Met ball with Lily last year. That was a really exceptional experience, though, because mm -hmm. the Heavenly Bodies theme of Met ball was very unique. You don't normally get a theme when you're doing a red carpet look. So again, we got to be a little bit more theatrical. Having a client that really wanted to embrace the theme was helpful. Um, the clothes were done by Givenchy, which when we saw that, that informed what we were going to do when Gregory Russell and I were going back and forth about what he might want to do. It all shapes things um, in a unique way. I think that being put in a room with one person and no hair and makeup, I mean, a no wardrobe and no hair and someone being like, do a look. You're just like, uh, I have nothing to bounce off. I have mm -hmm. being able to um, tap into the resources of your coworkers is priceless. Mm -hmm. So, bouncing ideas off the hairdresser, seeing the clothes, bouncing ideas off the client. Um, some clients are very involved in what they want the look to be. Other clients don't really, they have an opinion, but it's not as invested or they trust you or they're just like, I, you know, I usually say, do you want to do an eye or a lip? Where, where are we going? Are we like colorful? Are we playful? Are we sexy? Like what's the vibe? And so in a normal red carpet situation, that's sort of where we go, like who are you presenting yourself as that, right. for this experience. Met Ball was just different and I thought about it a lot and then I also got to walk around the Garment District of New York and collect stuff, right? Like I went into all the trimming stores, I went to the places that sell rhinestones and buttons, I looked at materials, I looked at fabrics, I thought a lot about the theme and then tried to interpret that into makeup. I had a lot of nights falling asleep thinking about it. I just marinated on it for a long time. And again, that's not <clears throat> something that we often get a chance to do. So again, it was um, a pretty wonderful and unique experience. But for day to day, I think just looking at a lot of images, there's so much imagery out there right now, so much that you can just sort of absorb, look at, think about, and take into your soul, and then let your own creative juices sort of mix with it, and then it sort of spits out as your own. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I like to look at art. I definitely like looking at old Hollywood pictures, old fashioned <clears throat> pictures. Um, Oh, painters, use of color, try to look at, at art in a way that could apply to makeup, even though it has nothing to do with even faces and textures and things like that, and let it all absorb into your brain. True artist. True artist you are, Fiona. I think anyone who is creative and makes their living being creative is a true artist. I, I mean, you're part craftsman, part artist, right? Like, you have to have both. Um, and uh, I think stay curious. I think being curious is really important. And that's one of the things I love about you, Hannah. You're a very curious soul. So. Thanks. Thank you so much for spending this time and talking with me. And I really hope that everybody out there who is interested in entering the world of makeup in this capacity. It is a really specific path and a unique path. It's There's lots of other ways to go about being a makeup artist, yeah. but this is one of the ones that's a little bit more um, shrouded in secrecy. So thank you for shedding some light on that. And oh, I'm so happy to do this. Thank I really you so much. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge because this is stuff that you just don't, you're just not gonna hear from people. People guard this stuff really, really closely. So um, it's really generous of you. 
Thanks. Of course. And I hope you guys really had some good takeaways. <clears throat> um, I hope to do more interviews because I think they're really interesting. And um, I think you're supposed to like and subscribe. Are Definitely they, like and subscribe. <laughs> and also, I'd love to hear, and I'm sure Hannah would too, any comments that you guys have to say, anything that you want to um, either have clarified or you found interesting. This is all about feedback and education and yeah. sharing. So as much as you might want to hear from me, I also want to hear from you. Thanks so much. All right. Perfect.